It is a fact that the majority of the followers of Muhammad, over one billion of them, are illiterate in the Arabic language and hence must trust and depend on their mullahs to explain the Quran to them. Based upon your research of the subject, as well as upon your personal contacts with different Muhammadan nationalities, what are your conclusions? I must emphasize repeatedly that a believer will not be swayed by logic or facts, which would undermine his or her beliefs. They must be able to ignore as well as deny both reality and facts. My experiences even with many of the highly educated Muhammadan Muslims, any and all my proofs are ignored without challenge. Nonetheless, let us share a few examples with our listeners. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 1.777 narrated by Abu Salama. In the morning of the 20th of Ramadan, the Prophet delivered a sermon saying, whoever has performed the tiqaf with me should continue it. I have been shown the night of Al-Qadr, but have forgotten its date. But it is in the odd nights of the last 10 nights. Sahih Muslim Hadith 2.631 narrated by Abdullah ibn Unais. Allah Messenger said, I was shown Laylat al-Qadr, then I was made to forget it. Muhammad, the self-proclaimed greatest of all the other prophets, could not remember the date of the most momentous event in his life, the night of revelation of the first verse of the Quran. Since Muhammad could not even remember the date of a recent and extremely important event and was not able to predict any future event, by what standard of logic could he be called a prophet? Sahih Muslim Hadith 328 narrated by Abu Huraira. The Messenger of Allah said, I found myself in Hijr and the Quraysh were asking me about my night journey. I was asked about things pertaining to Bayt al-Maqdis, Temple of Solomon, which I could not preserve in my mind. I forgot. I was very much vexed, so vexed as I had never been before. Once more, does Muhammad admit to his fallible memory? Yet again, Muhammad could not remember another momentous event in his life. Muhammad forgot what the Temple of Solomon looked like, the very same that he had only visited a few hours earlier, and led prayers at the head of all the previous Hebrew prophets on his alleged miraculous night journey. The listeners should be aware that in the year 622 AD, there was no Temple of Solomon in existence, since it had already been destroyed by the Romans 550 years earlier. Muhammad was actually deliberately and mendaciously deceiving his gullible but believing followers. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 1.394 narrated by Abdullah. The Prophet turned his face to us and said, If there had been anything changed in the prayer, surely I would have informed you, but I'm a human being like you and liable to forget like you. So if I forget, remind me. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 3.244 narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. The Prophet said, whoever was in itikaf with me should stay in itikaf for the last 10 days. For I was informed of the date of the night of Qadr, but I have been caused to forget it. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 6.550 narrated by Abdullah. The Prophet said, it is a bad thing that some of you say, I have forgotten such and such a verse in the Quran. For indeed, he has been caused by Allah to forget it. So you must keep on reciting the Quran because it escapes from the hearts of men faster than camels do. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 6.558 narrated by Aisha. Allah apostle heard a man reciting the Quran at night and said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him as he has reminded me of such and such verses of and such and such surahs which I was caused to forget. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 6.559 narrated by Abdullah. The Prophet said, Why does any one of the people say I have forgotten such and such a verse in the Quran? He in fact is caused by Allah to forget. It was typical of Muhammad never to admit error or fault, but blame everything on outside agents such as Allah, Gabriel, Satan, Quraysh, Jews, etc. The followers of Muhammad at the present time walk perfectly in his footsteps by always denying any wrongdoing and blaming everything on others.